wanted to share my investment strategy that has enabled me to avoid market crashes, also to share how my conservative investment strategy in the ETF SPY yielded a 54% gain over a recent 13-month period versus a buy and hold strategy which would have yielded a lower 20% gain over the same time period. Every 30 to 60 seconds during this video, I will reveal one of the 10 critical rules of the strategy that enabled the SPY ETF's 54% gain. Also, the strategy has worked multiple times over previous years, and I'll show you how, and was developed during my 35 years of market investing. This strategy is a way to weather stock market crashes like the ones I've experienced in 1987, 2001, 2008, and 2020. Make sure to listen to each of the 10 rules revealed in this video, because even if you're experiencing exchange-traded fund investing, this strategy leverages ETFs that fit a tightly defined profile. You'll also want to stick around to the end of this video where I reveal details of the stock chart type and two critical indicators that are key to enabling these significant profits. First, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not providing financial advice. This channel is an entertainment and opinion channel only about an important topic that we all care about and we're interested in making more money. And let me know if you're interested in this type of video detailing how I profit in trading ETFs like SPY by giving this video a thumbs up. And I'll share specifically now when and how I reveal my optimal buy point for the SPY ETF and exactly when to sell. My objective is to gain high profits while avoiding the losses that all individuals over 60 and retirees like me need to avoid. We are reviewing the SPY ETF investing strategy today on 60 Perfect. I'm Lynn Pearson, and thank you for being here today. Please join the 60 Perfect community on money and lifestyle over 60. It's free. Subscribe, click the bell, and you'll never miss another video like this one. After revealing the 10 key rules and picking ETF like SPY for this investment strategy, I'll detail exactly when I make a buy or sell the SPY ETF utilizing my unique strategy. Investing in ETFs can take the stress out of investing when you are either retired or close to being retired. In this video, I'll share how investing in an ETF like SPY leveraging my unique strategy and helps make more money. I'll also show you how I selected the best ETFs for this type of strategy. Then I'll share exactly how to repeat gains like the 54% detailed in this video for SPY. As retiree and during the years approaching retirement, I see stress-free, fast-moving and fluid stock market investments, especially in index funds. Now let's get down to detailing the 10 tips to landing big gains in ETF like SPY. Tip number one, invest in an ETF that holds a large number of U.S. stocks or securities. The SPY ETF echoes the S&P index and includes 506 of the largest stocks, which reduces the exposure to any one company's financial issue. SPY includes securities holdings for Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, and Google Alphabet. This ETF seeks to provide investment results that before expenses correspond generally to the price and yield performance of the S&P 500 index with the weight of each stock also equivalent to its weight in the index. I have found that investing in an ETF like SPY provides peace of mind through investing in the top U.S. stocks. Tip number two, select an ETF with low fees, enabling the retention of greater profits. The fees for ETFs that follow major markets are on the average quite low. The fee to hold the ETF SPY are only 0.09. This is because the SPY doesn't have active managers that move stocks in and out of this ETF. Instead, today's trading automation enables its tracking of the S&P index. These low fees mean a minimal cost to hold investments and thus a higher profit potential. 
Specialties. Specialties ETFs like the ARKK or EEM, which are actively managed, charge a much higher fee, such as 0.68%. These managers for these specialty funds take a big chunk out of potential returns. Tip number three, be able to trade quickly in and out of an ETF holding. Exchange traded funds like SPY are traded like stocks. <clears throat> Their trade orders are executed quickly after they are placed versus the mutual fund transaction, which is not posted until the end of the trading day. Like stocks, the ask and buy values in the ETF can be viewed live. I can also trade whatever funds I have available as there is no minimum dollar amount. Best required in trading top ETFs like SPY. Alternately, many of the top performing mutual funds require minimum investments of several thousand dollars up to even $100,000. Tip number four, invest in an ETF that has made wide swings in price over time, enabling outsized profits. An exchange traded fund in, is a bucket of stocks that trade on an exchange just like a single stock. ETF share prices can have wide price swings up and down throughout the day as the ETF is bought and sold. If we look at the SPY ETF's profile on Finviz Elite, we see that the SPY ETF's price per share fluctuates on average more than $5 during a single day. This means that when the market is moving up, SPY's price per share can increase a big amount. I've also included an affiliate link to Finviz Elite in the description below. ETFs can contain a variety of investments such as stock, commodities, real estate, or bonds. Some offer only U.S. holdings, while others include international securities, but the SPY ETF holds only stocks which can enable wider market swings and greater gains or losses. These potential wider swings are key to gaining the big potential profits with this strategy. Tip number five, invest in a broad market exchange traded fund Skip the funds that are actively managed, especially actively managed mutual funds. In 2017, a study showed that the average individual investing in mutual funds underperformed the S&P index by 4.7%. Also, the same study listed the S&P 500 return averaged over 20 years as 7.68%, while the average mutual fund investor leveraging a fund that primarily invested in stocks during the same time period realized an average return of only 4.87%. Also an average history has shown that index funds outperform actively managed funds. Tip number six, invest in ETFs that offer dividends, providing income while you wait for a fund's perfect buy or sell point. Investing in an ETF that provides dividends is a big benefit during times when the market is with lashing back and forth or in a holding pattern. SPY, like many market ETFs, pays dividends, although currently only a conservative 1.76%. During a low interest period, such as November 2020, this interest rate is still a great improvement on rates that banks' savings accounts plans are offering. The SPY ETF dividends have enabled me to realize an income from my portfolio while this ETF may be experiencing a tighter range in price. Having this dividend income also aids in peace of mind. Tip number seven, I am invest in ETFs that have significant daily trading volume so they can be easily traded when buy or sell targets are triggered. The SPY ETF averages 78 million shares traded each market open day which is a huge amount of volume for any ETF and which makes it a fluid fund for trading. This significant volume is the polar opposite of a volume realized in an ETF like iShares, residential and multi-sector real estate ETF res, which trades on average only 32,000 shares per day. Before I continue, if you are finding this video to be of value, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Just a quick poke of the thumbs up button in trade for my effort in making this video for you today. Tip number eight, 
select more liquid ETFs that hold actively traded stocks. Versus other types of securities, this primary factors that influence ETF liquidity are the securities included in ETF and the trading volume of these securities. The secondary factors that influence in ETF liquidity are its volume and the current trading environment. When extreme negative or positive economic news occur, stocks and ETF trading usually significantly increases in volume. This results in fast moving prices and the need to be able to trade quickly. Thus, low volume ETFs holding securities that are moving less frequently often take some time for a buy or sell strike. In the meantime, the ETF's price could be for example, rapidly dropping, you can see why ETFs that do not contain actively traded stocks are a poor fit for this type of buy-sell strategy. ETFs like SPY that hold more frequently traded individual stocks will be more fluid also in liquid. Also pertaining to the price I pay for an ETF when buying or selling, I found that investing in an ETF with a lower percentage of actively traded securities often results in a larger bid ask price spread, meaning that when trading a lower volume ETF and there is a need to sell quickly, the cost of the trade per share will often have to be at an ask level, which is usually quite a lot higher than the ETF's current price per share value. Tip number nine, select lower risk ETF. The risk profile of an ETF's underlying stocks are critical for the strategy. ETFs are shut down and discontinued regularly each year. For example, when their prices make a steep drop. As a retiree, I need to invest in solid ETFs. For Investopedia, approximately 150 US ETFs have closed in the recent three years. The top reasons why this occurs is due to lack of investor interest or a limited amount of assets, such as stocks held within the offering. ETFs with dwindling assets that are losing money for investors and its management company are frequently closed, and it may take as long as a month for shareholders to be notified of this closing. So I carefully avoid investing in narrow market segment ETFs. Before I continue on, I'd love to hear from you in a comment below if you or someone you know has had an ETF investment shut down. The less risky an asset is also, the more liquid it will be. For example, large cap stocks like those in SPY are viewed as less risky than mid-sized or small stock ETFs that invest in broad market segments such as SPY are less risky than those that focus on narrow market or specific sector. Tip number 10, set hard trading rules to prevent emotional knee-jerk trading responses that can result in losses. I also set hard buy and sell points for an ETF like SPY based on my analysis of historic trends and percentage movements. Setting and sticking to rules-based investing are critical. In my more than 35 years of investing, I found that establishing defined goals and guidelines, along with the commitment to stick to these rules, is the only way to succeed with an investment strategy. Sticking to these rules requires practice, dedication, focus, and patience. Consider the more recent huge market tips, 2008, 2015, 2018, and and the major one in 2020 with the COVID news, these significant market crashes then follow, can be followed by big run-ups and cause many investors, including me in the past, before I set hard rules to have knee-jerk reactions to market fluctuations. These reactions often result in the dreaded buy high and sell low panic investing. Most people haven't set any rules regarding when to get out or back into an investment, their fear that a potential market recovery is temporary often makes them lose out significant profits, especially when 
they re-enter well after an ETF's price has recovered. Investors daily make rational decisions, allowing their emotions to take over their decision-making. So before trying out a new investment strategy, I always make a good number of practice trades first. Before investing real money especially, a prime example of the average investor's emotional approach to investing was detailed in the results from the Fidelity Investment Study of the Magellan Fund Returns for Investors from 1977 to 1990, Peter Lynch ran the well-known Fidelity Investments Magellan Fund, which had an extraordinary average annual return of 29%. For that same time period, the S&P 500 returned an average of 15%. <clears throat> it was obvious why investors flocked to these Magellan Fund, res resulting in it becoming the largest mutual fund of its day. However, a Fidelity Investment study found that despite the fund's returns under Peter Lynch's management, the average investor still lost money. This low return despite the fund's excellent performance is a prime example of investors' emotional response to market swings and the knee-jerk buy high and sell low tendencies. My SPY ETF buy and sell strategy that I will detail shortly enabled a 54% profit in the SPY ETF during a recent 13-month time span and significant profits during previous years as well. I will next take you through the optimal chart view and key indicators that have enabled me to overcome emotional responses. When checking the SPY ETF for a status, I leverage Heikinashi Candlestick Charting View. Ikenashi candlesticks enable a quick grasp of the market's direction, reducing emotional responses to wide market swings. You can see that in this view versus the standard candlestick view, there are many more green or red candlesticks grouped together. This is because Ikenashi candlesticks give a chart a smoother appearance making it easier to spot trends and reversals. Ikenashi Candlesticks charting was a brilliant Japanese development by Manisha Homa in the 1700s, creating a charting formula that makes it easier to spot consistent price movements in particular. These types of candlesticks also minimize false trading signals during markets that are trading sideways or in wide swing. I won't get into the details here, but I suggest that after this video ends, you check out my video fully detailing the benefits of utilizing the Heikinashi candlesticks. I will have a link to this video in an end card and in the description below. There I describe the formula used to create these candlesticks and how they benefit longer term trading. I did have a difficult time finding a brokerage service that offered charting with Heikinashi candlesticks, but found that both E-Trade and Weevil offer these types of charts. I have added affiliate links to these brokerages in the description below. Leveraging a weekly chart view to track SPY versus the uh, daily or hourly view gives you more solid grasp of long-term market moves. This also enables better control of knee-jerk emotional trading responses. Viewing charts primarily in an hourly or daily view can cause unpleasant and unneeded stress. Special reactions to daily market fluctuations. Viewing an ETS chart in limited time views can also make it difficult to assess significant market Trend. I pull up an ETF chart in the day view only when checking for an exact percentage drop off the most recent high or a specific percentage increase from the most recent low. For example, my primary way to view the size chart is in the weekly view, as I mentioned previously. For FinVisily, the SPY ETF had a daily ATR or average true range of $5.58. This means that the ETF on average moves over $5 in one day. 
These are significant moves and if followed closely in this daily view, caused me stress responses to the spy's roller coaster up and down movements. Now I'll switch from a weekly view of this ETF to a daily view. And then if we switch to the weekly view, you can see now it's a little easier to see which direction the market is going in. Since you're seeing a week at a time, you can see when it did the big dip uh, beginning of the year with the COVID issue. And then it's run up. But you can see there's some regular red candlesticks interspersed here and there, which can give people, uh, you know, make them pretty nervous. So what I do is I prefer to look at Heikonashi candlesticks. Because when you do that, and that's under display type, I can change to Heikonashi candlesticks. You can see now that it Heikonashi really smooths out the, um, the market trending view. And you can see there's more green and red candles grouped together. So you get a much better idea of how the market is moving. And it helps you make much better informed trading decisions. So... I tend to look at an ETF like SPY in the weekly view as much as possible. And then if I see something like this big crash starting to happen, then I switch to the daily view, which you can see here, to see exactly how much it's dropping. Now I'll take you through exactly how I determine the optimal point in which to make a trade decision. How to determine the optimal buy and sell points for an ETF such as SPY. Understanding the history regarding the price movement of an index fund like the SPY ETF is key to understanding the most solid buy and sell points. We need to all avoid frequent trading in and out of an exchange traded fund. If trades are made too frequently, I've found that my funds are too frequently out of the market and waiting for the trade to clear. This has robbed me of profits in the past, especially as a SPY ETF often makes quick run-ups in price directly after significant price dip. I've also found myself trapped in an ETF like SPY after a quick repurchase when the market reacts with a significant dive that I haven't yet realized enough of a price improvement that would enable me to sell at a profit into the market dip. I realized that holding through market fluctuations to only sell during extreme market pullbacks or crashes, when my rules show to do so, are my gains gaining big profits? How did I determine exactly when to sell and pinpoint a likely market crash? Leveraging the following charting indicator. Trend lines are the most reliable indicator for a long term SPY ETF trading strategy. SPY is a great ETF. Trend sweep trading because it trades tends to move in a direction either up or down in price for extended periods of time. This makes it easier to draw trend lines on this chart enabling me to quickly assess and recognize breaks in market trends. For example, in an upward trending market, I draw trend lines connecting the bottom of the candlesticks. And in a downward trending market, my trend line connects the top of the candlesticks. What I look for when drawing trend lines is a significant break on a trend line. So let's look at the break trends in 2020 and 2019. You'll notice smaller percentage breaks in trends versus the deep dips that occurred in February 2020 and in October 2018. As I mentioned previously, we want to avoid jumping out of investment during smaller percentage market pullbacks like those that occurred in May and July 2020, and just to exit during steeper market downturns. Now, reviewing the price movements of the SPY ETF since 2016, it was clear that a 9% price break to the downside during this time period signaled a longer-term downtrend. 
I am one of the whole of the smaller full bags in price and only exits by when the trend line broke at 9%. This 9% may, may seem ridiculously extreme, but it maintains profits and keeps me from losing out when jumping in and out of the market during smaller price pullbacks. But to retain my investment profits, I also have to stick to the following rule. Never sell at a loss. In studying the historic moves of the SPY ETF, it is clear that despite periodic pullbacks or crashes that have affected this ETF, that over time in the long term, this ETF's price trends upward. In order to retain optimal profits, I've made a commitment to never sell the SPY ETF at a loss. It is always possible that a drastic market pullback can occur in a short time period after a rules-based buy is made, then it's important to pull through a market pullback until the ETF's price has recovered. Notice the price fluctuations in 2016 when I could have bought back into this ETF and another market correction quickly followed. And it could have lost money if I exited at the 9% correction point. I then held through the downturn to the price recovery. Set hard percentage buy and sell points for an investment such as buy. After analyzing years of this ETF's price fluctuations, I determined the optimal buy and sell points for buy by analyzing its chart. Let's we'll look at how I determined Optimal settlement five points for my strategy, resulting in profits like the 54% on SPY. My 6 9 investment trading strategy for attaining significant profits for the SPY ETF. I switched from the weekly charting view to the daily view only when checking if the SPY ETF has dropped a significant percentage off of a recent high. Reviewing price points for SPY. Over previous years, I determined my optimal sell point to be 9% off the recent high. Then I stay out of this ETF until it recovers to 6% above the recent low. Remember, the other key element to this strategy that I previously mentioned, I never sell at a loss. Why wait for a significant pullback like 9%? because I don't want to be frequently jumping in and out of the SPY ETF, but only when it's a critical move in retaining my capital investment. I found it useful to have a subscription to a service like Finvisible that I have used for years and which enables me to analyze and backtest ETFs that fit with my 6 line strategy. I can set alerts for emails when specific prices are triggered. So see my affiliate link or fit this a link in the description below. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to check them out, they also offer a free version.